Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Adam Sahakian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. On June 12, eight medical patients were transferred from Artsakh to Armenia. Six medical patients returned to Artsakh. The updated report of Artsakh's human rights defender published with the data of six months of blockade. Baku authorities have dug bunkers in the early Christian cemetery of the Armenian settlement of Gavurkala Artsakh. Representative Barbara Lee leads U.S. Congress call for Biden administration to add military aid to Baku authorities. Hora Gerd, an apostolic monastery in the captivity of Georgia. Adam Sahakian, one of the victims of the April War, didn't tell the military unit that he could draw or design well. He was an architect designer by profession, so that he would be taken to the front line. He was ready to give his life not only for his homeland but also for his family and friends. That's why he wanted to be on the front line, next to those who might be danger. Adam has been watching action movies since he was a child, movies that could have been about him too. Adam Sahakian was born in 1996 in Yerevan. From two 2002, he studied at Khachik Dashtens Lyceum No. 114 in Yerevan. Then in 2013, he entered the Faculty of Architecture and Design at the Yerevan State University of Architecture and Construction. He practiced karate and received a yellow belt. Adam Sahakian was drafted into the army on January 26, 2015 and served in Artsakh. On the night of April 1 to 2, 2016, the Baku authorities launched a large-scale attack against Artsakh. Adam Sahakian was from the Border Guard Battle. On the morning of April 1, he went up to the positions and the attack took place around 3 o'clock on the night of the same day. After 15 to 20 minutes of intensive bombardment of the positions by the enemy, the seven border guards led by Captain Adam Sahakian from position 112 moved to a circular defense. Sergeant Adam Sahakian fighting with his comrades in arms for five hours against the enemy inflicting heavy casualties died a hero's death at around 8 a.m. following several gunshot wounds to the body and forehead. Adam Sahakian's five-hour battle against the enemy gave the Armenian Jeraka regiment the opportunity to deploy on the second front line and stop the enemy. Adam Sahakian was posthumously awarded the State Combat Service Medal of the Republic of Artsakh and the State Courage Medal of the Republic of Armenia. Modern Armenian consists of 13 and letters. At the end of the 12th century, the Armenian alphabet was supplemented with the letters O and F. The Armenian alphabet, decorated with various symbolic images, became a carrier of both the beautiful and the semantic. The Armenian alphabet, which is the phonetic letter type of writing is integral and its composition. Each letter has one sound. Each sound has one letter. In spite of some changes, the Armenian writing system has preserved that principle till now. It is original in its coordination of letters, the structure and the way they are arranged. It does not copy directly to any alien system. It is one of the rarest scripts in the world. The originality is shown in the numerical values of the letters. During more than 1,600 years of existence of the Armenian alphabet, Alphabet, little changes have taken place. The Armenian alphabet is one of the most perfect and well preserved in the world. It is used in Western and Eastern Armenia, in Artsakh, Javakh, in Armenian colonies, in different cultural and armenological centers. A rich literature has been created on the basis of the Armenian Mesrop scriptures. This writing of ancient, middle, and new civilization has a valuable contribution to the treasury of world culture. On June 12, eight medicalized patients from Artsakh together with their companions were transported to the specialized medical centers in Armenia, accompanied by Russian peacekeepers and in medical vehicles. Six medicalized patients who were referred to Armenia for treatment under the state order returned to Artsakh with their companions. According to the Artsakh Ministry of Health, throughout the blockade, a total of 562 medicalized patients were transported to Armenia by the Red Cross and peacekeepers, of whom 492 were transported to the Red Cross and 70 were accompanied by peacekeepers. In Artsakh hospitals, 12 children are in the neonatal and intensive care unit. Nine patients are in the intensive care unit, four of whom are in critical condition. 
On June 12, the Human Rights Defender of the Republic of Artsakh published an updated version of the extraordinary Trilanguel report on violations of individual and collective human rights following the six months blockade of Artsakh by the Baku authorities. Here are some key facts about human rights violations following the blockade reflected in the report. Cases of bidirectional movement of people along the Stepanakert Goris Highway decreased by 198 times. Nearly 58 times fewer vehicle movements were recorded on the road than would have been the case without the blockade. Around 30 times less vital goods were imported than should have been the case. Due to the suspension of the planned surgical operations, around 1,400 citizens were deprived of the opportunity to resolve their health problems through surgery. The Baku government totally or partially interrupted gas supplies from Armenia to Artsakh for a total of 117 days. The electricity supply from Armenia to Artsakh has been completely interrupted for 154 days, which continues to result in emergency shutdowns. According to preliminary estimates, around 11,000 people have lost their jobs and sources of income. Approximately $346 million in damage has been caused to the country's economy. All Azerbaijani offenses against the people of Artsakh are committed within the framework of the state police of racial discrimination and are deeply directed against their right to self-determination and the fact of its realization, aiming to close definitively the page of the conflict in their favor through ethnic cleansing. There is no people. There is no right. The Monument Watch ORG website, which monitors arts and cultural heritage rights. As is clear from the space photo published by the Caucasus Heritage Watch website, the Baku authorities have dug bunkers in the cemetery area of the Armenian Paleo Christian settlement Gavurkala in the High Kajur village of the Martaket region of the Republic of Artsakh. After the Granite Gate, Gavurkala is the largest early Christian Armenian settlement on the Artsakh plain. It covers an area of around two hectares, has a round earthen wall, and a 5 to 6th century church held built of ashlar and decorated with cross motifs. The pillar of the early Christian monument was still standing. One of the first Armenian inscriptions on the Artsakh plain was found in the 1950s in the town cemetery, exactly where the bunkers are dug today. It cannot be ruled out that the other sarcophag bearing Armenian inscriptions are also to be found in this area. Our answer. In fact, the government in Baku is persistently pursuing the destruction of Armenian traces in the occupied territories. There is a great risk that such bunkers will be placed in the area of the settlement itself. According to Article 4.1 of the 1954 Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property, in the event of armed conflict, states undertake to respect their cultural values, as well as those of other parties by prohibiting the use of such values, their immediate surroundings and defense structures for purposes which could lead to their destruction or damage in the event of armed conflict, and by refraining from any hostile action against such values. According to Article 53 of the first protocol to the Geneva Convention of August 12, 1949, it is prohibited to take any hostile action against cultural heritage, to use it for military purposes or to make it object of reprisals. The Baku government is once again grossly violating its obligations under international conventions. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, ranking Democrat on the House Appropriations Subcommittee, is urging her congressional colleagues to call on the Biden administration to end U.S. military aid to the Baku authorities in light of Aliyev's brutal six-month blockade of Artsakh and the population of 120,000 indigenous Armenian Christians. Congressman Lee's letter to Secretary of State Antony Blinken comes as Armenian foreign ministers and the Baku government plan to hold another round of talks in Washington next week. The letter stated that the long-term blockade of Artsakh by the Baku authorities and the continued occupation of sovereign Armenian territory not only threatened to jeopardize meaningless efforts to resolve the conflict but also seriously endangered the security and well-being of the Armenian population of Artsakh. Congresswoman Lee's letter states, in the context of this ongoing blockade and President Aliyev's continued threats, the extension of the President's waiver of Article 907 of the Support for Freedom Act will send a dangerous message to the Azerbaijani government that there will be no consequences to coercing Artsakh Armenian through intimidation, starvation and lethal force against its will. One of the main Armenian monasteries of the developed Middle Ages, Khorakert, which was built in the 12th to 13th centuries, remained outside the borders of the Republic of Armenia, following demarcation some 20 years ago or more, and is now under the control of Georgian border guards. It should be noted that the monastery has always belonged to the Armenian Apostolic Church, with its own architectural type and church charter, and has nothing in common with the Georgian church and architecture. It should also be noted that following the demarcation of borders, five villages 
villages inhabited by Armenians remained on the Georgian side. Chanakchi, Opret, Khokhmel, Khozorni, and Akhkerpi. Following the definitive closure of the border in 2007, the inhabitants of the Armenian village of Jiliza were deprived of the Khorakyat monastery, which they had owned for centuries, and of possibility of freely entering the five neighboring Armenian villages. To reach the monastery, villagers have to pass through the Bagrat Ashen border post, even though the monastery is 10 to 15 minutes from their village. The Khorakyat monastery is located in the village of Jiliza in the Lori region. On the western slope of the Lalvar mountain, traces of ancient buildings around the Khorakyat monastery allow us to assume that the town of Khorakyat was located here, whose foundation is attributed by the historian Vartan to Haiksan Khor. The city was inherited by Ashot G on the orders of 9th century King Sambat II Gurgen, the son of the merciful, the medieval church. They have destroyed narthex, the ruins of the chapels, the refectory and the calf tombstones have been preserved from the once fortified complex. According to the inscription on the west facade of the church, the monastery and narthex were built in 1251. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 